Okay guys, so now it's time to install the Viterbox uh, internals into the old fuse box. Now, this is not the fuse box I have in the car currently. This is the original one that came with the car and I know it's bad. Uh, I had bought a used one and then I had it refurbished by a gentleman named Ron in Texas and he refurbished it or at least he tested it. I don't, I don't think he actually refurbishes them. I think he tests the diodes and the relays and he, he tests all the pinouts to see if the there's connection between the front pinout and the back pinout or the engine side pinout. Uh, so that's the the fuse box I have in the car now is the one that was technically refurbished. Um, this is the original one that I know was faulty. This was giving me all sorts of problems like uh, headlights would activate the wipers, all, all sorts of crazy stuff. So uh, let's start by um, opening up the Vitor box kit and then uh, we'll move on to installing it on the fuse box. Okay, so this is how it comes. Got a picture of a Ghibli on there. And comes with the uh, instructions. Some shipping materials, packing materials. Um, fuse box cover. It's a, uh, this is not an injection molded one. I can tell this is 3D printed but it does have the icons molded into it and it has the fuse values for each one, which is actually very helpful. Um, I don't think the original one had that. It just had the icons. Uh, so this uh, then is the circuit board. Um, it has the fuses uh, like a GM style fuse, spade fuse, except for this one, the this last one here, it says 2516. And then on a separate baggie, you get uh, a 25 amp and a uh, 15 amp fuse for you to um, install, depending on what your your current fuse box has. So uh, we, you got to look at your old one and kind of determine which one you need to use. So one thing I did notice is uh, this also has marked P167. And the box I noticed had my last name and P167 written on it as well. So I think they track these. That's almost like their serial number. So if you have issues and you reach out to them, they could figure out. Uh, I guess it's some sort of quality control that they have. Uh, another thing to mention is on the old fuse box, you had uh, three relays and one diode. With this new one, the diode is actually built into the circuitry. So you do not need to reuse that. Uh, you can kind of see those little barrel shaped things. Those are the diodes and uh, you will you will need to reuse the uh, relays. So you want to make sure those relays are good by testing them uh, before uh, you move any for, uh, further. So let's uh, start by taking apart this uh, old fuse box and see what we have. Okay, so the first step is going to be to remove the relays. Remove the diode as well. This one's a little tough to get out. All right, here we go. Uh, this is spare fuse. Uh, remove the fuse block. This just pulls straight out. And. There, this is the, uh, the uh, driver's or the cabin side of the fuse box. This is the engine side. And uh, this should be this rubber gasket that you're gonna need to reuse. Uh, it could happen also that your rubber gasket stays attached to the firewall. So just make sure that rubber gasket is not lost. All right, now we're ready to remove all of these screws and get access to the inside. Okay, so these are all Phillips head screws. Uh, so I'm gonna start by removing the uh, these five here. Actually, sorry, the four on the outside are what keep the case uh, closed. So we're gonna remove those four first. Make sure you don't lose any of these screws because obviously you're gonna reuse them.
Uh, I got myself a pry tool to help separate, but I could tell this thing's already separating on its own just by removing the screws. So I don't think you're gonna have a hard time at all. So you can see it opens up as a clamshell. There's your printed circuit in there. There's a plastic separator that separates the two halves of the printed circuit. And you should be able to remove this part of the housing. So maybe you do need a little pry tool here. Just to separate the uh, spades that come up. So that's the housing, you're gonna need that. This is all part of the circuit board. So now let's remove these five screws to get access to the other half of the housing. Okay, so now it's time to separate, oh, there you go. Separate the other side, the engine side. So now you got my two housings here. Obviously we're gonna need these. And so it's interesting to see, this is the um, engine side, pretty clean. And the driver's side's pretty clean. The inside, like this is the piece that was sandwiched in here. And look at that, I mean, it's full of dirt or dust or, Look at this. It looks like this was exposed to the elements. Like, I, I just don't understand how this got like this. And when I opened this up, I could definitely see there were some major issues with this fuse box. Uh, I'm trying to determine what that pin goes to, but that pin is completely burnt out um, and corroded. So uh, this fuse box was definitely not healthy, to say the least. And uh, I see some corrosion on a lot of these solder points as well. But uh, this is pro oh, probably one of the worst or the most problematic things with the uh, B-Turbos is these fuse boxes. Now I'm going to use some electronics cleaner to just clean this uh, housing a little bit. You don't have to do this step. It all depends on the condition of your, uh, of your box. I, I just wanna do a little cleanup if I can. Okay, we're now ready to install the new circuit board. Uh, make sure also that uh, you don't lose this gasket. So I don't know if you could tell, but there's like an O-ring kind of 
gasket all the way around on the inside. This is the part that goes to the uh, uh, engine side. So make sure that that gasket doesn't come attached to your uh, old printed board. So make sure you don't lose that. Anyway, we're gonna put that aside. We're gonna start with the um, uh, cabin side first. We're gonna put it face down. So where you have your slots for your relays, you're gonna face that down. Okay, so the first thing you gotta do is connect this ground wire. Uh, so you're gonna have to actually, um, I had it, I had this like this, you're gonna have to actually connect that first uh, so you could see what you're doing before you place this down. Uh, so you want, let me just show you that, that female connector has this little barb here. That barb has to point that way. That's how it snaps into the fuse box. So you gotta feed it through the little hole there but see, it naturally wants to have the barb facing this way, but the barb needs to face the opposite way. So you're gonna have to kind of twist it a little bit so that you get it to snap in and it should actually click. Hope you heard that. Uh, so that's a, a positive connection there. And if that's not uh, you know, nice and connected, when you insert your connector here, it's just gonna push that, bar uh, that female connector back in. So you don't want that to move on you. Um, Okay, so now you have that in place. You could actually close the housing. It's very, very simple. So you just match up your uh, female prongs through the slots on the other side of the housing. You make sure that that ground wire is not interfering with anything. Oh, actually, I think I'm missing a step here. One sec. All right, sorry about that. I thought I had missed a step because this came with three additional screws and I thought that uh, those were put in place now. Um, but these three screws will actually go on the, on the, on the uh, cover that we're gonna put on now. So, um, or actually on the opposite side. It's to keep the circuit board locked in place. Um, but we don't need to worry about that just this minute. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is um, just go ahead and close this up. And this comes with a, a nice gasket on here too, uh, which is good. So let's uh, get this part back on. Make sure you could feed all the spades through there. Uh, you're gonna need to be careful negotiating this ground wire. You're gonna need to tuck it away so that it does not interfere with you closing the case. Hopefully that will do the trick. All right, so all of the male spades are popping through. So now we're ready to seal this. We'll put our five screws in place so for the um, cabin side which is what's facing up now uh, I'm sorry this for this is the engine side that we have facing up you're going to put the five screws only for now. So you got one at each corner and then one right here in the middle. And I think that is the only thing that is really different from the original assembly. Oh, I, put, I used the wrong screw right there. That's bad. Sorry. This is the screw that came with the kit. This does not go on this side. I just grabbed the wrong one. I'm just actually gonna place them all in already so I don't make that mistake again.
Now make sure you don't over tighten these because they will strip out. You're just screwing into a plastic uh, little stud so, or, or emboss so you don't uh, want to over tighten these. Alright now we're gonna, so this one's not catching any threads. So something I think, uh, I don't think we're gonna use the screw. Okay now let's flip it over. Okay, so now we're gonna use, we're gonna, the screws that they provided, the three screws, they're gonna go into the cabin side in this orientation. So there's basically five holes. You're using the center one and then the one at the top, one at the bottom. And this is definitely catching threads, so. Again, don't over tighten it, just make sure they're nice and snug. So that's three screws on this side, and we got four on this side. It's the instructions actually tell me. Oh, you know what? I got confused. See the instructions? It makes it look like there's a screw in the middle, but there actually isn't. So basically, uh, you're not going to use these five screws that originally attached the, this part of the circuit board. Uh, you're gonna use three on this side that they provide and then the four on the outside that keep the housing together. And that's basically it. The only thing left is to place the fuse there. Uh, what we do is we look at our old one to see what fuse was in this uh, far left position, which is the power window fuse. So we're just gonna pop that out to see what we had in there before. And in my case, it is a 16 amp fuse. So we are gonna do the 15 amp that came with the kit. So we're gonna pop that in there. And the only thing left to do is put the housing on. All right, so Basically, we're done with the b box installation other than installing the relays. Uh, so again, uh, make sure you test these before you uh, put them on. So I'm gonna show you how you could test them. Okay, so to test these uh, relays for, con what you're gonna need is you're gonna need a tester for continuity. Um, you're gonna need a 12 volt source. So I have this little, um, this is the, uh, it's a little 12 volt battery for my Mercedes. This is actually what um, uh, operates the shifter. It's a, it's a column shifter that's operated. It's got its own battery. So um, what you do is on the, I, well, let me, let me not get ahead of myself. What you first test is if you have continuity across these two poles, which we do, see that, that light lights up. And then you're gonna test if you have continuity across these two poles, which you don't. And then across the middle one, which you don't. So that tells me is that when these uh, two circuits get power and ground, 85 and 80, by the way, this is a, it's not a crazy Italian mech um, uh, relay. This is pretty straightforward relay, uh, 12 volt, 20 amp. Um, and basically it looks like when this gets activated, um, power from 30 connects to 87 and 87A because there's no continuity. There are some that it will have continuity to this middle spade and then only activate the outside one. But this one looks like it activates both. Um, so let's just check that there's no continuity between 87 and 30 on any of these. 
because if there is it's a bad relay so these two are good these two are good okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna activate the relay and then test continuity between 30 and 87 again so first thing is we connect power to 85 and we connect ground to 86. Now, the minute I touch this to the battery, you should hear a click. That means it's working. So let's see. Okay, so you can hear that. So it's activating. Now I just wanna make sure that we have continuity. So this is the 30. Now let's test continuity to the 87. And you can see that that light goes on and to the 87A. Okay, so, and then if I turn it back off, continuity is gone. So this is a good relay. So we'll reuse that one. So you're basically just gonna do that to all of these. Um, to make sure that they're all operating correctly. So that clicked as well, I heard it. Um, so now let's test continuity. Continuity. So this is also good. Gonna disconnect it again. And there's no continuity. So this is also good. And the last one. Clear the click. So, continuity to 87, continuity to 87A, and now disconnect it, see if the continuity is gone. So, all, all three relays seem to be good. So, let's get them on the fuse box, and that should be the last step. Okay. So, we're going to install our relays one two make sure these are nice and solid connections they actually tell you to make sure that your female um connectors are lined up with the slots and so that when you push this in uh, it, it goes on correctly and if you feel a, a lot of a lot of uh like it's not going in right you got to check what you did uh, again we don't use this uh, diodes built in you have the slots but you know you're not going to use that and the last thing is to just make sure you don't forget to reinstall your gasket on the engine side okay so uh, this is ready to go in the car Okay guys, time to get the upgraded fuse box in the car. We got all our relays installed. Uh, this just goes, gets secured with four uh, M6 nuts. And then there's also this plastic housing that you should have ready. It's uh, part of the factory uh, installation. It basically just can, protects your connections and the wire comes out of this exit spot here. And then that gets on with uh, three more of the same type of, uh, actually, yeah, three more, I believe. Or actually, it's only two. Two more of these uh, uh, nuts. So, uh, let's get this on the car. Okay, here we are underneath the passenger footwell. Uh, I have the uh, uh, glove box removed, so we have better access here. Uh, you know, basically this part of the wiring harness is kind of in the way. But, uh, again, we have the different plug connectors we're just gonna pull out one at a time and I'm gonna try to unplug and install the new one as we go that way I could try to ensure that I don't forget anything um, but the leads might not be long enough so I'm gonna wing it see as I go I'm just gonna do a time lapse for this because this could get a little bit though um, it could take a little bit longer just because I'm gonna do it as carefully as possible
Okay, so um, got the fuse box out. I'm gonna spend a few minutes just checking all this wiring because I see a lot of spliced wires. I see this wire that's not connected to anything. I have no idea what this is here. Um, looks like it's connected to some sort of resistor. Um, yeah, I don't know what this mess is. I'm just gonna take a few minutes before I continue just to inspect there's no broken or exposed wires or anything that could be making contact with something that it shouldn't and creating other issues. So just gonna take a few minutes to look into that. Okay guys, I got all the connections back in. Like I said, I still don't know what this belongs to. It was loose before I started. Um, but in any case, um, one thing that I noticed when plugging in um, these plugs. So the new mill terminals coming out of the new Bitur box are thicker. They're a lot thicker. So you gotta make sure that if you feel too much tension or too much interference getting to plug in, you gotta uh, go in with like a pick or something. Just make sure that the little um, female receptors on the um, on the plug are not pinched closed or pinched out of the, or like forced bent out of the way. So just make sure that you get a good positive engagement and it doesn't feel too forced. It should be a nice positive engagement, like a nice snap. Uh, when it's uh, or click once it gets in there um so uh obviously i i didn't film it because it's impossible to get a camera in there and even if i did all you saw well, all you would see would be the back of my hand but i um the first thing before i start plugging these in is i i secured the four nuts on the uh, uh engine side so that this wouldn't move on me while i was uh, working on this side so now i'm gonna connect the connectors on the engine bay and then i'm gonna try to start the car and do a little systems check. Okay guys, we got the, all the connections done on the engine side. Uh, if I forgot to mention, make sure you disconnect your battery before you do this. So I'm just gonna connect the battery back up here. Now let's move this out of the way. Okay guys, so the good news is we got the fuse box installed. Um, I could tell a few things that are running run better. Uh, windshield wipers run a lot stronger. Um, as I showed you in the video, the power windows run stronger. The passenger side's better than the driver's side, but uh, before I put the, uh, the fuse box in, the driver's side 
didn't move up at all without you grabbing the edge of the glass and helping it with your hand. Uh, so um, I, I could see a lot of the circuits are stronger. The bad news is it didn't really fix any of the uh, weird wiring issues I was having. For example, the horn still has constant 12 volts. Um, so what I think I might do is I might circumvent the fuse box altogether and have a add a relay for the horn uh, in one of these relay blocks and just do my own new wiring for that. Uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to install these hello ones instead of the this guy, this super heavy Fiam uh, air horn. Uh, this actually comes with two horns. They have different tones. So together they're very loud and they're much more compact and I could fit them somewhere smaller. Um, uh, the other thing is the uh, chime. This is something that I didn't realize I had an issue with until I started uh, removing the old fuse box because this is kind of positioned under the passenger footwell. So this is the chime for the seat belts, doors, and I believe key in the ignition. Um, and uh, one of the wires that powers this is that pink wire that had um, the bad crimp on it. So, but that didn't fix it either. So this is just constantly on. You start the car, you're driving and it's still on. You have your seatbelt on. It doesn't recognize it. Now, because there are a lot of trigger wires to this, it could be anything. It could be one of the wires coming from uh, the seatbelt. It could be, uh, again, uh, one of the signal wires coming from the door, the ignition it could be a lot of different things. So um, I'm gonna have to figure out, it could also be that this part is faulty. So I'm just gonna take it a step at a time. I think first I'm gonna see if the part is faulty and uh, and then see if it's the wiring going to the, um, that's connecting to here. Uh, trying to think of what else. Uh, oh, the fog lights still no power to the fog lights so i actually i removed the um the button um so the fog lights and the hazards are on the same uh switch panel and i'm just gonna test the switches to make sure they're okay uh the this one it, it might possibly be the switch but for the hazards the switch is doing something because the uh relay the the, the turn signal relay starts buzzing instead of clicking it buzzes you know so something's wrong in the wiring either uh i don't know if it goes to the fuse box at all i think it does um but something is wrong so i i don't think it's the fuse box now that i replaced the fuse box i could kind of like figure out that it's something that's touching a wire that's bare or something before it gets to the fuse box so i just gotta track that down so uh, the good thing about this VTOR box is that you could kind of use it to kind of scratch off, you know, all of the issues you have. Are they fuse box related or not? And now you could kind of say, okay, they're not fuse box related. So what's the next item down the line that could uh, fail? Is it a switch? Is it a, a, a bad ground? Is it a wire that's cracked and, and, and is, it's exposed and it's co causing a short? So things of that nature. So. Uh, you know, we'll just dive back into it. So, guys, thanks for watching. I hope this video helps you out. If you want to do one of these uh, uh, upgrades to your fuse box, and um, I'll just keep posting these videos until I get this uh, uh, car back on the road and working well. So, thanks for watching. Till next time.